how are you? You're right. Hello, my Hi. love. How hello, are you? Hello, good, hello. sorry. Congratulations to you Thank tonight. You. I'll start things off with you, Will. Good. How did it feel to finally be out there to get that first match really under your belt and you and to catch him? Wow. I mean, I was uh, grateful to be in the ring with such a great wrestler like Takesha is. Without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best wrestlers in the world. Um, this is the first time we've ever touched one another as well. I mean, we've done tag matches with one another, but it's the first time we've ever like had a match one on one. Uh, the reception was incredible. Like I was getting like proper like nervous backstage because I feel like people's eyes are on me more than ever. And uh, with all like the hype and everything, you just got like you got to knock it out of the fucking park, eh? And I just wanted to do that. Uh, so like it, it took like a lot for me to to leave Japan, leave the Indies for a bit, just because like it's been my home for eight years, man. And like I, I love those guys, and I can't say enough. Like I, I'm so grateful and so thankful that I got to grow up in Japan. But like you guys just made me feel right at home. Like thank you very much for leaving the key underneath the mat. I will treasure your home very much so. It was so incredible to watch you out there to really seize that moment and feel that out there. And Tony, I mean, I was saying it earlier that there was so much pressure kind of coming into this pay-per-view, deemed one of the best pay-per-views perhaps ever, but of 2024, and we were so early on into the year. Did it live up to the hype for you? I think it was one of the best pay-per-views ever. It was one of the greatest nights of my life personally. And Will, you were tremendous tonight. What a great match. Osprey versus Takeshita. The last time I saw you, we were in... Crystal Palace, London, England, and here we are now in yeah. Greensboro, North Carolina, both great wrestling cities and traditions, and uh, Will Ospreay in AEW fits like a glove, in my opinion. Let's God, open it up. Really appreciate. We'll open it up to the floor. Guys, any questions for both Tony or Will? Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, how's your back? Because uh, you. Mate, my ass is so bad. Can I show like a little bit of it? Like, I won't show you. Want to show more of it? I'm not going to show you my cheek, right? But like, bro, look how bad that is. Oh my God. Yeah, that, 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 that spot was pretty sucked insane. so yes. much. I want to make sure that you're okay, obviously. Uh, the second question I actually had is kind of your mindset now. You are now full-time U.S.-based wrestler, which is you, you've never done that. You've basically you've done, obviously the Indies in England, Japan. I mean, you've done matches over like, here. Yeah, just dip my toes into it. Yeah, but now you're actually going to be going on American TV every week. Mm -hmm. What is your mindset about how you kind of almost have? Do you have to change your style? You're just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to be Will Osprey, and I, I'm going to make the basically the TV adapt to me. I mean, the one thing I'm doing my best to do is I'm trying my best not to swear. Like, oh, that it's so hard. It's well, like, here you can. You feel free to no, no, off the air. I mean, here, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, FCC is oh, yeah. But, like, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, mate, like, even, like, cutting promos now, like, that, that's, like, a real hard task for me to do because I've never done it, like, into an American audience. A lot of our stuff in Japan was always backstage. So, like, I, I knew when I wanted to make the jump, I was, like, really, I'm really trying hard at that and really trying, like, to learn that style because I'm all new at this. Like everything that you see right in front of you is all gonna be like me experiencing something completely new. But like my mindset right now is like, I have been screaming down the lens of a Jap Japanese camera that I am the best in the world. And right now I've never done this. I've never been full time in America. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of things, but it's mainly an anxiety. It's an anxiety of like for ages. Like I know when the bell rings, like I, I can do it, but like, it's not just the bell ringing anymore. It's about showing personality. It's about connecting with the crowds, and like that's my main focus now. Is just, just like I want to show my personality because I'm a thing. I'm a little bit of a cheeky bugger, so like I like to I like to show that off. And like this is gonna be like a, a really rough road, not rough road, but it's gonna be like it's gonna be hard to like work out these navigations. But like I'm ready, man. Like I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to be completely vulnerable out there. And just like if, if I mess up, I shut you fuck up to me. Like, I, I don't mind. Like. I'm here to learn, and like I'm not I'm not going to get it out right away, but like, but like I'm doing my best, and I think like honestly out there today, I think if that's the the first thing that I've got, like pfft, everyone's fucked, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great already, just so you know. Yeah, I just we said like you. only four swear words is all good. <laughs> doing amazing, uh, DJ Danny Ocean, Dirt Sheet Radio. Uh, like you. like Renee said, um, we are. In March, three months into 2024, they're saying this pay-per-view of the year already. Um, scrolling Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, they're saying this was the match of the year. You mm. to catch that. How are you feeling? Your first official match at AGW. They're already calling it match of the year. How are you feeling? I mean, I've got a lot to top now, haven't I? Like, I mean, look, once again, like, I, I can't do those type of matches without a great, like, 
partner to do it with. Takeshita is every bit as good as Will Ospreay. It's just on that night I was just better, pure and simple. But like, look at the move that I had to put him away with. Uh, the Tiger Driver, and I keep saying this so much, man. The Tiger Driver 91 is the most dangerous move in wrestling. It is not, it, it was used back in the day by Mr. Haru Masawa. And I said that right, didn't I? I'm yeah. sure I did. But like, you know, I actually forgot that wrong, didn't I? Be like, no! <laughs> but like, it was one of the most dangerous moves in wrestling. And like, some guys like some guys are able to like kind of figure out a way of getting out of it. But like, it's a complete pressure on your neck, man. It is. Just, it's a sheer drop. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised in like the five months time, like people will be like, hey, you can't do that move anymore. But just like. This is what I bring to the table, man. Like, I'm one of the most dangerous professional wrestlers in the world. Look, I am a lovely man. I, I will walk your mum across the street any day of the week. I will happily give you a cuddle if you're ever feeling sad. I, I'm always a good shoulder to cry on, and I look after you to the day I die. But I am one mean motherfucker when I want to be. Awesome. Like, that's all I care about, man. So, like, if this is... So, this is the first pay-per-view of AEW's year for 2024. Right, so we got Dynasty, probably got Forbidden Door, we got uh, Double, nothing. In, Double Nothing, All In, All Out, uh, Full Gear, no, Wrestle Dream, Full Gear, and World's End. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first yeah. one. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, the most dangerous man in wrestling right now, bro. Yes, sir. Will, Stu Myrick from Sports Guys Talk yes. of Wrestling. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the victory. After the match, you had a moment with your United Empire mate, Kyle mm -hmm. Fletcher, mm -hmm. who is, of course, the Ring of Honor World Television Champion. Uh, talk about what that meant to you, and what do you see down the road? Possibly teaming with Kyle, well, possibly going after Stu, Kyle. Stu, actually, on the pay-per-view broadcast, we announced uh, there will be a, a match, uh, Osprey versus Kyle Fletcher. This is a great uh, opportunity for me to say, though, officially, and this is uh, acting in the capacity uh, as the GM here, I have to talk about the injury report. I would say after that match, you, sir, are questionable for <laughs> what's dead. So let's see. I, I, I uh, very much hoping to have Osprey versus Fletcher, but we'll see if how you're doing. Yeah, just keep it penciled in. Just keep it penciled in for now. But he like, talked me like, into not. He talked me into not scratching it. But. Yeah, don't scratch it off. Like let me just like I've got to earn some money out here. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, I, I spent my money on like a bathroom, a kitchen, Barbados all the day. I've got to start winning some big matches, eh? Well, he beat up. I don't know. I, I would really like to do it, but uh, we'll, you know we'll see as soon as possible. I think it'd be fantastic, and I, it's one of those matches. I think it's a dream match on television. They've been great partners, they're great friends, and I'd be very excited to have Osprey versus Fletcher. Hopefully Wednesday we uh, we announce on the broadcast. So, uh, But please, uh, you can elaborate. I think you guys have a great friendship, and you're two of the great wrestlers. Uh, me and Kyle go way back. Like We've had so many matches over in England, and uh, when the pandemic struck, uh, him, him and uh, Davis uh, lived at my house while uh, Australia Indies weren't kind of picking up. So the UK Indies just opened up and it was kind of like, we, it was discussed that if they stay with me, I'll look after them. Didn't charge them any rent or anything, I just wanted to look after them. We'd done uh, Rev Pro together. Uh, was able to get over to America quicker, but like, for me, Kyle and Davis, like, we're like three best friends, man. And I'm like, I miss you, Davis, love you so much, dude. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, but like, for me, it was so happy to see Kyle and like, man, it's changed his hair, it looks, looks beautiful. God, like, that's one beautiful man. But like, having him out there, getting to throw the crowns up again, like in AEW together, like, of course, like, we're gonna, we're gonna get back, the, the, the band back together and like, roll through with the Dallas, uh, Don Callis family, of course. And like, for me now, it's just, it's, it's all steam ahead and, uh, and for Kyle, I think this is a big proving test for him. Like, I, if the match does go ahead on Wednesday, I don't want him to hold anything back. Like, this is proving point to you. You've been in the ring with Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega, and you've shown so much. Like, you are the future. But, like, right now, like, I've just stepped in front of you. What are you going to do? Pardon you. Um, D. Dowdy, uh, 104.5 FM, WCCG. I um, will. Question for you. Um, throughout the match, there were a lot of aha moments, a lot of momentum shifting. How were you able to stay focused and adapt to, to catch this offense? Uh, a lot of it has just been like uh, experience over in Japan, dude. Like, I mean, once again, I, I have watched Takeshi, like, I was a fan of him. I saw him live at 2019. And uh, one of my mates at the time went, God damn, he's sexy. And I was like, <laughs> so I was sitting next to him, I was just like, hey, you, you're all right, calm down, mate. But, yeah, he is, isn't he? But uh, 
it, when it, well, those type of matches are happening, like I just kind of like remain uh, from my training what I did in Japan because with that, it's, it's endurance based. You have to keep your timing right, you have to keep your energy levels down, like not get too freaked out in those moments because like there's a lot of like heavy shots. So the moment you start freaking out and breathing heavy and like not. Uh, not uh, creating space from your opponent, that's when you're going to find yourself in like, difficult positions. Bless you. Uh, but for me, like, it, it's not a, a rodeo, uh, it's not a ride that I haven't ridden before. Uh, I'm very much aware of, like, my, um, I think my benefit throughout a lot of these guys is um, my, my gas is kind of good, uh, uh, my breathing, like, my cardio, that's a funny, I can't even think. You see, he did a lot of brain damage there, boom, like, but like, uh, my cardio is real good. I just like I, I try my best to keep my breathing going. But like that moment, he brain busted my ass on the rope, dude. That was the most painful thing I've ever felt in my entire life. I wanted to cry, man. <laughs> man, there's a lump, dude. Like, <laughs> but Takeshi's just the best, man. Like, I, I can only do what I've just been practicing over in New Japan. So this is all that I can present right now. And like, I'm looking forward to showing you guys like what I've been learning and what I've been experiencing. Because there's so many guys that don't know me yet, dude. Like, I'm. Hi, my name's Will. I do good pro wrestling. Two <laughs> more questions here. Keith Elliott Greenberg with Inside the Ropes magazine. What's up, Keith? This is a very historic night tonight, and there were a number of legends in the arena. Uh, were you able at some point to slow down enough to glean any knowledge or at least inspiration from those legends? So this honestly is... I hope I'm allowed to say it, but like... So I, I was like, ah! Uh, backstage, the doctor was like, all right, on the table, we'll just put some ice on your butt. And like, I was like laying on the table. Like, uh. <laughs> and then like, Ric Flair walked in and I was like, oh, and stood up. <laughs> and, he was just, and he said, uh, you are everything I've heard of and more. You are one of the best wrestlers in the world. And that coming from him is just like, thank you, Mr. Ric Flair. Thank you very much. He's a standard. Like, I, I know like, I know sometimes it gets forgotten about, but like every like little bit of wrestling has some like inspiration from Ric Flair, man. So like the fact that he was able to like just come over and just go like, you're the fucking man. It's like, man, amazing, like brilliant stuff. Last question. I'm a bit of a two-parter. Uh, Tony, you were present for a pretty crazy match that Will had a couple weeks ago. I'm interested to hear like what goes through your mind when somebody who you've already invested in is having a, a, a match like that, which is incredible, but also uh, risky. And Will, when we had spoke prior, you, you communicated how important it was for you to still be able to live in the UK. Uh, how important was that to coming here and, and what kind of schedule will you be on moving forward? Well, I, I was a tremendous match. That was an amazing, amazing, amazing match for Will to finish up in. Rev Pro, and after a great run in New Japan Rev Pro, I thought Will versus Michael Oku was a great match, and I was really blown away not only by the quality of the wrestling, but also uh, really the quality of people. I got to meet Will Ospreay's family for the first time, which was really cool. Was the, so sweet, dude. You're the man, and uh, the the great things he said afterwards. It was just really kind, and uh, I thought the way he helped. Uh, really set up his debut in AEW and also paid tribute to the great fans in the UK that helped him get to this place. It was really a great thing and it was great to be there. And of course, the match took a big toll, I think physically, but knowing it's Will Ospreay, you know, I had a high confidence he was gonna be here, be ready for revolution. And uh, he was everything we would have expected. The match was everything we would have expected. I thought Ospreay versus Takeshi had delivered, revolution delivered. And again, I think Will Ospreay in AEW fits like a glove, as you're seeing here tonight uh, firsthand. Thank you, Sean. I'm basically Wolverine, bro, and I'll be fine in like a couple <laughs> of days. Just heal up. Um, so, just remind me of the question. So, it's just like, how are you going? What's your yeah, schedule looking like? And like, yeah, what's you it mean? That living in the UK was very important. Yes, uh, uh, I'm currently in a relationship with um, another professional wrestler. Uh, I call her out, uh, Alex Windsor. She's great. Um, and now I'm, I'm in a position where I'm a parent. And uh, I don't know, the first time I told people, everyone went, her, <laughs> you, like, <laughs> I'm a big kid as well, man. And, um, and that, I can't tell you enough what, like, the girl and that kid have done for me, man. Like, I, I wish I could honestly be so open about, like, how my shows too, like, really mean to me. Um, 
But like, they've gone through a lot for me and I could not ask them to uproot their life, their school life, like she's such a big, and if you know my missus and you know her story, like it's kind of documented within the UK scene, I don't know if it's documented in uh, the world of wrestling, but just like she's gone through so much, man. She's like a, a genuine warrior, man. Like no amount of like ass pain will ever, <laughs> will ever compare to what that girl's gone through and still being like an incredible mother. Like I could not have asked for like a better partner to go through this whole thing. Like I said it, like I went to Barbados and just before I left, I was like, man, I'm nervous. I'm nervous of being part of this. And she just gave me the biggest hug and was just like, you got it, like go do it. So like for her, it's just like, I couldn't ask to do that. Like, and a lot of people forget like the majority of like the travel is kind of like, it's l so much less than Japan. Like Japan was like 15 hours at one point because like there's a bloody war going on in Russia and Ukraine. So I used to go through there. I wasn't allowed to go through the airspace. So we had to go underneath. It was horrible. Like, so coming over here, it's not actually as bad. It's just like, and, and like, I don't mind it. Every now and then it's a bit of peace and quiet, isn't it? Just fucking put my feet up and just, listen to Fleetwood Mac on, so I, I don't mind it. But like, my schedule is full time, dude. Like, I, I wanna be here every single week, delivering the best matches that I physically can. Like, this is this is what I've been preaching over in New Japan. Like, the, the work that I've put out throughout all those eight years of doing it. Um, it was the hardest thing leaving it. But like, like Tony said, this fits like a glove. Like, this is where the best wrestlers in the world are. Like, honestly, have you we any, any chance to step back and look at this fucking roster? It's insane. It's like the, the most, the elite is the most elite roster of all time. We are so blessed to be living in this moment. I'm so blessed to have a, a dressing room where like, there are people like Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong and Takeshita, Sting, Orange Cassidy. Like, I'm gonna have a long old list of guys to go through and I'm willing to tick off every single person. Like I'm willing to go to work at this point. Um, I'm looking forward to it, man. Like I'm here for three things. I'm here to win world titles, retire Billy Gunn, and get a Nando sponsorship. <laughs> well, congratulations on your day. Guys, today. thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, this means the world to me. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'll leave you with that. Billy Gunn's gonna be like, what?